Hey everybody. I don't think there's a thing that cannot... I don't think there's anybody in this world that can't gain something from reading various texts, religious or uh, historical, educational. Um, there's nothing that can be lost by learning. But I think people are afraid to learn sometimes. And I know sometimes it has to do with the fear of delving into something that you don't believe is true. And as an example, to, so I can kind of explain myself, the same way a Christian may be reluctant to look into, say, the Quran, because it would go against uh, Christian values. Uh, goes back to the dogma I was talking about in the previous video, but this isn't uh, but I'm not speaking about actual religious components or belief systems. I'm talking about the allegories and the archetypes and the stories behind them. Because often when I've spoken to people saying, well, uh, you know, religions are all very similar, they have similar stories, people will say, well, no, they really don't, um, that they're all completely different. And it's because they're missing the deeper, the deeper, deeper allegories, you know. The explanation of what it means to be alive and be human. And so many of these stories are just that. They're little stories put in to explain how everybody goes through the same stuff in life. And that sounds very rudimentary, but it is. And that's, uh, you know, these the perfect examples would be the story of Gilgamesh. And um, you may have heard, may, you may have heard of the Epic of Gilgamesh. And I'm not going to try to get all philosophical and try to explain the story because that's for each person on their own to decipher but in the deep roots of the story Gilgamesh was he was a two-thirds god one-third man he was a brother was created for him Enkidu Enkidu was made out of clay and water right this these stories, these allegories, these, these symbols go back to the ideas of Adam being made from mud. All of these different characters from different stories and ancient uh, religions. So anyway, we have Gilgamesh who his brother was created for him and, and in this one sense you, there are folks who may take it as a literal story that Gilgamesh was a real person. <laughs> Gilgamesh and his brother, <laughs> they kind of balanced each other out. And I look at it as Enkidu was, was Gilgamesh's conscious, righteous self. The, uh, or maybe it could be the other way around. Gilgamesh was the conscious, righteous self, and uh, Enkidu was more of the uh, primal mind or the enjoyer. Enkidu did strange things, like he went around letting creatures out of traps. And then the trapper would come up and say, hey, you're letting all my, you know, food go. So it has to do with moral values and whether or not, okay, you're doing the right thing by letting animals go, but someone and his family has to suffer because of it. And there are stories like this, countless stories in these little things. There's, uh, there's one part of the story where Gilgamesh is told of a flower or a plant that grows right under the water, which can help mankind to live forever, you know. So he goes and he collects this water, this plant from the water, and while he's sitting in the water bathing, a serpent comes up out and takes the plant from his hand, and then retreats, leaving nothing but a, a shed skin. If a person has to take that as literal, I don't know really what else I could say, but the idea is the snake is saying these secrets are not to be, you know, these, these aren't things that we just give to people. Pe there's a reason why people live and die, and it's cyclical, and by leaving his skin behind, it's showing that symbolism of the shedding of the skin and the renewal. And I think it's a really fascinating idea. You know, the, the, the flood myth goes back and, and, and also ties in with this, and these are 4,000-year-old, you know, stories. And it's really, it's really interesting when you take the idea of Enkidu and try to kind of apply it almost Enkidu and Gilgamesh to almost an Adam and Eve type status not in the sense of being the first people but in the mistakes that are made tying together with the serpent the tree of knowledge um, and, and so many of these stories are just 
they're really allegories for the search of man for comfort because Gilgamesh was eventually he eventually learned that life is not he, he went out and he would try this he would try that you can tie his, the story of Gilgamesh back to very similarly to the story of Buddha to where he went and he tried this he tried that and he tried this and he was trying to find this ultimate way to live and in the end every one of these stories ends the same we don't have a magical figure who finally found and attained this status and that says this is the way. They all came to realize the same thing, that this is it, that this is life, this is what you do. Where you have to take care of your spiritual needs, but you also have to take care of your family. You have to wonder about the meaning of everything, but at the same time you have to just accept that things are the way they are. And in the end, Gilgamesh found that that was it, you know, uh, as as a two-thirds god being that was two-thirds god, he could watch his, you know, brother Enkidu pass away and move on and realize that life's about embracing the moment that you have. It's about a whim. It's about carpe diem, you know, it's about seizing the day, which that root of that goes back so much farther than just an idea of, hey, enjoying the moment. This is about do, don't put off till tomorrow what you can do today. And this isn't just physical things to do. This is mental things. This is decisions. This is ideas. This is new ways of being, I guess. And to realize that no matter how many things you learn, you're always going to come back to the root, which is yourself. And so you can read the Epic of Gilgamesh anytime you want, or you could read a condensed version of it, or just look up some of the basic allegories, but these stories are all fascinating, and I urge everybody to read some of these with an open mind, especially if you've heard one more than once, you know, you've heard this, or this, or the Epic of Homer, or this, you know, and Odyssey, and you start hearing about these stories over and over, and then you read them, but you read them with a new mind every time. Even if you may have read something like this back in high school, junior high, it matters not. You know, if you're, if, if 20 years has passed since the last time, you, you need to read one again. It's the same thing with books, you know. And this is kind of, if I want to finish on a note, is this is why I'm so fascinated that people take things so literally. Because a person may take a book, a fictional book today, and if a person were to say, hey, don't take that, uh, you know, you have to take this literally, don't take it symbolically, people would say, what are you talking about? The authors always have a deeper symbolic meaning behind their behind their uh, books that they've written and stories they've created. You know, this is part of man. He's incorporating the story of his life into the stories that he writes. So, why the Bible would be any different from that is beyond me. I don't understand how folks can say, well, you can take this book symbolically, but the Bible is literal, and, and that's the thing, is you, you get so much more out of these books if you don't take them literally. Nor if you move to the other side and, and assume that Zeitgeist is telling you the truth and that um, and spirit science and that everything you hear is a symbol, and that Jesus was nothing but a symbol for, for the sun, and, and, and that, that this means this star, and this means that. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes things have multiple meanings. You know, people get so wrapped up in thinking that they knew that know the new answers to what things mean, such as symbols and ideas, that they miss the obvious connections, which are that it has more than one meaning, and the best stories have more than one meaning. And since everything is cyclical, then that meaning covers many different topics. So, just some stuff to think about for me to think about. Peace.